Thank you. Legal services, should we hear? I'll go straight to Ms. Engstrom. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to, to uh, thank the committee for, for, for the decision yesterday to make uh, the legal opinions uh, public. I think that, that, that was a very good and very sensible decision, and as the chairman pointed out, it's uh, compatible not only with the Cashman report, but also with the Turku case from, from the ECJ. So, so that's a very good thing. Uh, then, uh, look, looking at this legal opinion, uh, I think it, it's a very interesting opinion because, because I think it confirms ma many of the uh, concerns that we have raised about this uh, Act agreement, and in particular, whether it is compatible with, with the uh, fundamental rights in the European Union and elsewhere in the world. If we look at, look at uh, paragraph 40 of the, of the legal opinion, I mean, the language is extremely guarded in this opinion. It says in, in, in subparagraph D that it, it appears that the agreement per se does not impose any in, in, uh, obligation on the union that is manifestly incompatible with fundamental rights. Now, I mean, if I, if I ever, ever listen to guarded legal language, that, that's it. And of course, uh, the opinion as a whole explains why, why it is quite rightly so, so guarded, because it, it points out that very, very much depends on how uh, this treatment is actually implemented in, in, uh, in member states' law or in, the, in directives. For, in, for instance, there, there is one... Uh, uh, as an example, uh, the issue of proportionality is very important. That is a fundamental right. I mean, all laws and all punishments, etc., uh, have to be proportional. Now, according to the Act Agreement, if so somebody does uh, ma make illegal copies and download things illegally, uh, damages uh, should be calculated on the, uh, on the retail price or the market value. Now, as an example, a, a two terabyte disk uh, can hold roughly half a million songs. If you calculate that uh, at, at the market price of one euro per song, which is uh, normal, uh, then the damages for, for having, having a ter two terabyte disk with, with, full of music would be half a million euros. Now, would that be proportionate or not? I mean, this is not an extreme example. This is something that lot, lots of teenagers do. Is it really proportionate that the family would have to well, sell their house and leave uh, all their possessions if, if, if you were find, found out? This legal opinion seems to be of the uh, opinion, well, that yes, perhaps it could be. Uh, the the lawyer, lawyers who, who wrote uh, the assessment for, for the intercommittee in June this year uh, were of the opposite opinion. They, they, they said that this raises re real concerns about whether it is proportional or not. So we have here a case, in, uh, like, like I said in the beginning, uh, I mean, from the language we see that, that the, this, uh, the Act Agreement is, at the very least, borderline uh, when it comes to, to respecting fundamental rights or not. And here we have a case where, where, where there are opposing uh, opinions from, from, I mean, quite serious and qualified law lawyers on both sides. Uh, the ones in the inter-assessment saying that this is probably not proportionate, whereas the legal service uh, suggesting that may, maybe it is or not. So I think this strengthens the case for, for what we have uh, been asking for, or what we are asking for, that we should uh, send the ACTA agreement to the European Court of Justice to get clear and proper guidance uh, as to how it should be implemented, if it can be, in, in, be implemented in, in a way that is compatible with, with fundamental rights and the acquis. There are other, other things that are very, very interesting in this opinion as well. In, in Article 32, it, it mentions uh, three strikes. and says that uh, three strikes uh, were uh, on the table uh, during the negotiations, but then uh, it was removed from the agreement. This is very interesting because uh, almost exactly a year ago, on the 22nd of December, I, I put a written question to the Commission asking if three strikes uh, had in fact be, been discussed. And the Commission then said, uh, at no stage in the Act of Negotiations were there any proposals on the table about the direct or indirect introduction of compulsory three strikes or graduated response system. 
Uh, but now the le legal opinion says, here says the opposite, which of course is in conformity with the, with the leaks uh, of previous draft agreements. Problem is those draft agreements uh, have never been released uh, uh, officially. So, so we, we can't actually know uh, who's right or wrong here. So I would, would stress that uh, to me it makes sense to have all those uh, draft agreements made public officially because, because as the legal service points out, the problem with the, with the act agreement as it stands now is that it's very vague. Uh, it's not at all obvious how various things should be uh, interpreted in it. Uh, one of the core aspects of, of the act agreement is it talks about cooperation between rights holders and internet service providers and the business, business uh, community in general. Uh, in the early drafts, I mean, it was pretty clear what that cooperation mean, because then three strikes was mentioned in, in, in a footnote uh, as an example of it. But then that was removed, so that, then it becomes a bit unclear by, uh, what, what the cooperation is suppo supposed to mean. And that brings us to, to, to another problem. I, I, <clears throat> uh, if we're talking about China, Ms. Galloway mentioned China quite rightly, because indeed, uh, uh, when discussing whether this is a worthwhile agreement or not, it's supposed to be about an anti-counterfeiting agreement, and China is not one of the signatories. I mean, yes, one, one can very much ask, is this worthwhile at all? But going beyond that, if we're talking about China, this uh, kind of cooperation uh, uh, under the auspices of the government, but, but private uh, uh, companies co cooperating, is one of the big problems for, for European and, and, and Western companies wanting to, to enter into China and, and offer, offer services on the, on the Internet. Now, so far, we, we've been able to at least criticize China for doing that. But if we sign an agreement actually encouraging that, that uh, kind, of, kind of cooperation, we will lose all our moral high ground in relation to China. So I think this could be very damaging to, to European companies trying to enter, enter into that market. And as I said, I mean, what, what, what is the point of an anti-counterfeit trade agreement that, that doesn't include China? So, yes, to, to conclude, I think this legal opinion confirms the fact that this is, at best, borderline, uh, uh, a borderline case. It depends very much on how it is being implemented, if it actually would be compatible with fundamental rights. So I think there is a very, very strong case to, to ask for more authoritative guidance for, from the ECJ before even considering uh, signing this agreement or giving consent to signing this agreement. Thank you. That's